Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. I used to think that Ream Marathon water heaters were really complicated and it was hard to figure out how they actually work, but after I studied the wiring diagram, they're actually pretty simple. And that's what I want to share with you today. So if you take the top cover off on a Ream water heater, you have a little wiring diagram right here that shows how this thing works. And I actually have a print off of this, so let's go to a table and see if we can trace some of this stuff to figure out how it works. This wiring diagram right here is from the water heater itself and even though it's a good diagram it's missing a couple of things on there which make it a little bit harder to understand. For example the high limit temperature switch which is right in here that is not there there's no symbols showing that it's there and also the temperature switch on the upper thermostat and the lower thermostat you can't see the switch either. So I went on Google and I found another wiring diagram which shows it a little bit better and it's this one right here. On this wiring diagram, we do see the high limit switch symbol, also the temperature switches as well. Right here on the lower thermostat, there's the switch, and the upper thermostat, which can go two ways, here and here. And then here we have the high limit switch, which actually is a good depiction showing you that if this switch trips, if the water heater gets a lot hotter than it should be, all the power gets cut off right over here. So with the high limit switch tripped, only this terminal would be energized and this one right here, everything else under that will not have any power. And they did a good job depicting this as well. Basically this right here, that's gonna be our temperature switch, one of these. And what that means is when the water heater is getting hotter, when the upper part of the water heater is getting hotter, this switch will go up. As the water inside is getting colder, this thermostat senses that it's getting colder, this switch will go down and energize terminal two instead. So this switch goes both ways. Once it cools down, it goes over here. Once the water heats up, this thing goes over here. As for the lower thermostat, it's a lot more simple. Whenever the temperature on the lower section of the water heater gets colder, this switch will go down and touch number two. As the water gets heated up by the heating element, this switch will go back up and interrupt power to turn off that heating element. So let's try tracing this quick and see how the power goes. It's actually really simple. There are three wires that go to the water heater from the breaker panel in your house. One of them is gonna be the ground. I colored this one green. And the other two are gonna be your hot legs, the 240 volts. And I'm gonna go ahead and color the hot legs red. So there's power going to them. So power comes in from the breaker panel into your water heater and it goes to the upper thermostat and high limit switch first. And if the water heater is operating normally and this is not tripped, power will go through here and go into the next set of terminals, like this. And from terminals two and four, the power continues like this. So one of the hot legs has no interruptions at all. It immediately powers up one side of the element, the upper element, and it also powers up one side of the lower element. So this leg of the wiring diagram is super easy. As long as this high temperature limit switch is not tripped, this whole side is just always energized. And on the other side, L1, that's where we have our thermostats. This thermostat switch, it's either in this position between one and two, or it's in this position between one and four. If the temperature goes up, then terminal four gets energized. But if the upper thermostat is sensing that the water here is getting colder, this switch will go down and energize number two instead. Let's say that Christy starts taking a shower. So the upper portion of the water heater starts to run out of water and this thermostat senses that the water is going down, the water temperature is going down. This switch will go down and it will energize this portion right over here, which sends power to our upper element, like this. And since we already have power at the other side of the element, once this switch touches number two, then boom, our upper element starts to heat. And at the same time, as she's using the hot water, the cold water is coming in through the dip tube towards the bottom of the tank. So this thermostat switch on the lower thermostat, as the temperature on the bottom of the tank starts to get colder, this switch starts to drop until it hits number two. As the upper element is heating, 
this lower thermostat will also close. But because on most electric water heaters, the elements work one at a time, the lower element will not come on. So they only work one at a time. So let's say that eventually the water gets heated up on the upper portion of the water heater and this switch, it swings over here to this side, it pops open and it goes to the number four position instead. That will de-energize this side. So there's no more power going down this wire, no power going to the other side of the upper element. So this element turns off and the power starts to go down this line instead. And since the lower thermostat is already closed because there's cold water on the bottom of the tank, the power immediately goes through and powers on the lower element. At this point, this thermostat is satisfied, this element is off, this thermostat is calling for heat, and this element is on. Once this thermostat is satisfied and this switch opens up, the water heater is then in standby mode until somebody else uses some hot water and that cycle will repeat itself. All right, and we're back at the water heater. So let's go ahead and take these covers off and see if we can actually trace what we were just talking about on the water heater itself. And before I continue, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power off and then pull these plastic covers off so we can see where the wires go better. Okay, so here's our three wires coming from the breaker panel. We got our ground right there, and there's L2 and L1 going to these two top screws. We have our little reset switch right here, and behind here we have like a little metal bar or a snap disc. If this overheats, this pops and interrupts the power right over here, so there's no more power anywhere below there. But this is not tripped, so usually we would have power going through here, like we saw in the wiring diagram, and coming here and here. So over here we have this little jumper bracket which transfers the power right over to the next terminal and this would be the upper thermostat that can go both ways. So once it cools off the switch goes this way, once it heats up the switch goes this way. And on the other side if we trace this green or blue wire we can see that it goes right to one side of the upper element and this black one it goes down and inside this hole and if we look at the bottom compartment you see that black wire come out of here and go into the lower thermostat. And if the water temperature right over here goes lower, that means this switch will close and send power down this yellow wire, which will energize this side of the element. And if we go back up, here is that red wire right over here that goes from here and down into that lower thermostat. And really that is all there is to it. It's actually super, super simple if you know how it works internally with that wiring diagram. Well guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you ever have to troubleshoot a re-marathon water heater, hopefully this breakdown of the wiring diagram will help you out. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, let me tell you a little story about a single lady that had three kids that had just lost her job. She finally ran out of money and her food was just about out as well. All she had left was some bread and a little bit of sugar. So she gathers her three kids around and she says, kids, we're out of money, we're out of food. Let's pray to God and ask him to send us some food. So they gather together and they start praying. And they prayed like this throughout the day. Down the road from where they lived, at the end of the street, lived a lady that worshipped the devil. She was a Satanist. And she caught wind of this, that they're praying to God, and she got a great idea. She's like, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go buy a bunch of premium nice food, some clothes, some toys, just a bunch of stuff, and bring it to this woman and tell her, you know what? You've been praying to God, but all of this here, this is from Satan. So are you going to start worshiping Satan now or what? So she does just that. She buys all this stuff. She comes to this God-worshipping lady, knocks on the door. She opens it and she says, Well, hello, sister. You see all this stuff? This is all for you. But before you take it, do you know who it's from? And the God-worshipping lady says, Oh, sweetie, you know what? It doesn't even matter who it's from. I worship such a great God that he can even make the devil himself bring me food. Thank you so much. She takes it and goes in the house.